Function objects are classes that have the parenthesis operator overloaded. So, and I'll illustrate this with a for each uh, function, and also a defined if function. So, function object is like a class. So, a class with the with the um, parenthesis operator like that so suppose that this function um, takes an integer and then suppose I'm just printing it out so that's uh, the way this gets used is um, first you have to declare a vector well you have to pound include a vector here and then I'll, I'll print out the contents of the vector, basically. So I'll declare my vector. Two, three, four, five. And then I'll use for each to print the content of the vector. So just to show, for each is um, it's an algorithm. It's it's in the header file algorithms, and this this header file, this algorithm file has a lot of like functions that and for each is one of those functions. So I go over here is for each. So for each is a way to iterate over um, everything in a collection. So these functions they take iterators. So they are um, data structure independent. They can work with uh, multiple data structures. Any data structure that return an iterator, uh, this for each function can work with it. So the so it's like this, v, and you'll be doing this a lot, v begin, v end. Actually, it should be this. So uh, declare a vector one two three four five. The for each function will go through every element of this vector by using for each v begin v end. And the third parameter is the function object. So this one. So for each will go for each number, and then for each of those numbers, it's gonna call this thing, and this thing will get printed out. So here's the equivalent pseudocode inside of that. Uh, turn. It's wrong. For each of okay. for each instance, I declare because I need the algorithm header okay so it prints out the numbers three four five now a function object is a class so this thing can have a uh, members so let me change this to a something different 50 so one example is like um, this thing can have a count variable. Okay, and then every time I go here, I'm going to print out the count. And now I'll print out the number. So uh, I'll also increment the count. And I need to initialize the count via the constructor. Uh, actually, just initialize it to zero. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is um, instead of just simply printing out the numbers like here, I'll print out a count value. Okay.
So here it is. So here's the count value. One, two, three, four, five, followed by the the actual integers. So but this is not really working yet. Uh to show you why. Yeah, this isn't the whole story yet. So if I use this, so count I made it public just for ease of access. So if I make it 10, okay, and then at the very end, I'm going to uh, print it out again. Actually, I'll make it a little more clear. So I make it 10, so the 10 does get in there, so it starts at 11, 12, 14, 15, but, but at the very end, at the end, um, this is 10 again. So, so there's a little bit more going on here I would like to clarify. Uh, if you look at the for each, look at these uh, area function. This function is being passed in by value. So, so although this um, okay, it's passing by value and then it's also returned by value here. So the two things. So one thing is that when you're passing it in, it's best to have a copy constructor. You know, in this case, it works because they, they sort of make, a, make up a, their own copy constructor. But in general, um, you want to control the copy process. So I have a copy constructor. Class my class and I'll just copy it like this oh but but the other thing let me get the other thing first yeah so that that's one thing but the other thing is that at the very end count is 10 it's not uh, 15 or 16 or whatever and if you look at the definition it actually returns the function object that got passed in so we can try to solve that by doing this uh, my class equals this okay so I'm passing in I'm also getting it out so hopefully my count is gonna be 16 uh, 15 oh yeah yeah 15 because they increment first and then they do that okay so by using this uh, by taking the return value from this I you know I can get the updated version of the count but but we should have a copy constructor because they're copying by copying everything on the stack, which might be unnecessary in general. So this is the what it really should be. Sure has no error. So that's that's that. So this this function object, this part is the key. Um, this is what's, because there's only one argument, so um, it's called unary function. There's also a binary function because uh, it's when you have two arguments, something like this. Uh, if the return type is a Boolean, it's called a predicate. So this is a binary predicate here, so it takes in two arguments, returns this. If it's it's like this and it's a unary predicate um, so those are the most common versions of uh, function objects binary or unary meaning one or two argument that's the most common case and you know to call it a function if it doesn't return anything or if it returns a boolean meaning that it's some kind of decision making uh, structure here then they call it predicate so those are the most common things and that's the terminology used in the documentation so they call this a function. Uh, some other algorithms will call it unary function, the same thing. So I'll go over the next one. I want to go over. So I think I'm done with the for each. The next one is the find if. So I want to go over this one. So this one they call it a unary predicate. That means uh, it's a function that takes in one argument. That's the unary part. And it's a predicate because it returns a Boolean. So this is a Boolean condition, um, returns true. 
basically. So do it here. I'll do the find if here. Uh, get a count. Now leave the count in there. Uh, find is basically find you return a true if uh, if the a match is found. So uh, keep it simple. I can hard code. Uh, okay, I can have it here. Like find target or something. Find target. Uh, so like this, so I can initiate my find target. Okay, and the find if is gonna go over every element in the integer array, and then every single one of those integers will show up here. So. If uh, if the integer i equals my find target, right? So I'm gonna return true. So I'm always printing a count value. Uh, change this a little bit. So I always print out a count value. I won't print out the numbers though. I also return false. Uh, also, I guess I'll also print out. Uh, found just to show the, how the code flows so let's say we're trying looking for 30 okay now um, basically all the algorithms start out with two iterators the you know, the beginning and the end. So, well, virtually all of them are like that. So virtually all of them is gonna go like V begin and V end and this. And yeah, I'll, I'll leave this in here just to show point. So it builds. Okay, so it never finds it. Okay, so um, the reason remember there's a copy constructor. Well, you can debug it, but yeah, I know why. Because when I did the copy constructor, see if I don't do the copy constructor, they'll generate something, and this find target will be copied over correctly. But since I'm doing a copy constructor, I need to have this as well. Right, because without this, without this line I just added, it's not copying the, the target number correctly. That's why it's not finding it. So found. Oh, and count goes back to zero. It's just like um, it's just like before, the this object it's being passed in by value, and then so the one that is being utilized is not the same object that's declared outside of here. So. In the for each example, I, I took the return, I, I did something like this to get the object back. But in this case, it's not possible. If you look at this one, it returns an iterator. If you go back to uh, for each, the reason for each you can get that is because it, you, it returns a function. So, so that approach won't work in this case. So it's kind of just stuck. Uh, yeah, if you if you really need the count variable to kind of persist, you have to use a pointer or something like that. Okay, so that's that. 
Oh, so what we'll find if it's returning, it's actually returning an iterator. So let me get rid of this count. Let's just make a point. So if it finds it, the iterator will point to it. If if it equals uh, end, then you can say it's, it's not found. Okay. Else, uh, it's gonna be found. It's gonna happen so many times to me. Just <laughs> get a. Save this as a script. I'm not safe as script save the code. It's gonna happen so many times later on. Okay. So I have to save myself some typing later on. Okay, run it. So found, 30 is found. If you use 31, you know, because yeah, it's gonna get here. It's gonna get it's gonna get a not found if you use 31. Yeah, so that's how you see if it's found or now the compare iterator to end. So the next topic, lambda expressions. Lambda expression is just a way to write to to make the function object more compact. Because if it's a simple function, you don't really need to declare extra class for that. You can just declare the function when you call the algorithm. So again, I'll be using the for each and the find if example. I think I saved this right. Oh. So go back to the for each. Uh, for lambda function, this is not required anymore because instead of declaring an uh, a object, like declaring a class and then using an the operator uh, parenthesis here, it's just the function just declared inside of the for each uh, function call. So v begin, v end. So the lambda function goes into the third argument. Like this is the number, f the argument number three. What used to be the the function object here. So it's. So it's like like this. It's kind of like a like a function, basically. It's a function where it, oh, for each, it's, it's not C sharp. Okay. So it's like a function where the name of a function is a bracket, and the body functions like this. So uh, let's just see out I. So uh, no warnings. Yeah, so it prints it out. So instead of using a function object, just because it's just a one liner, you just, just put it like this. So this is the basic lambda expression example. Now before I had that count thing already, so let me do the count thing again here. Or or whatever. Right. So the way it, Go see. Well, let me try this first. So, oh, uh, just just to show what the error message is. This. So count. 
account. And then I output the number. So it goes make account, uh, print account, and print a number. And I have to use the count plus plus. So the error message if count is not captured. So it can't not capture. So, so remember the thing where you pass in the function by value. It's kind of like inside of for each, it's like a separate world. I mean, you, you don't have access. You can't just access outside where you cannot access the account like this. They say it's not captured. So because um, they refer to this thing as a capture list, like the thing that goes in between the, the bracket over here, they refer to all the stuff in here as a capture list. So let me just print out this. And let me just uh, print out count at the end. So let me do this. Uh, so plan is to print it out at the end as well. Increment counter will read only object now. Capture lets you put it in here, but you can't actually change it. So let me let me comment that out for a while for now. Oh man. Typo. <laughs> okay, so now it's okay. Okay, so this shows that you can get in a variable, get a variable inside into the function, the lambda expression function by using this uh, so-called capture list. But if you try to change the variable, it's going to give you error, right? Uh, you can't change a variable. You can pass it in, but you can't change it. Right, it's a, it's a read only object. So what you do is mutable. So that makes it read only. I mean, that makes it changeable. Let's see. So now, now this is builds correctly. Okay, so inside you're incrementing count like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So printing the the numbers here, ten through fifty. And the count's being incremented as expected, but at the very end, the count goes back to four again. So it's a separate world analogy thing where inside of this is like a separate world, even though count became nine eventually. When it, when it comes back out, it's ten. So uh, to make it so that if you want count to persist, for uh, if you want count to be nine at the very end, uh, you need to add uh, an percent over here right here the same percent so in that way that lets the code inside of the lambda expression uh, lets it change the count value outside so so build so this time it's it's nine now so the count value gets incremented to nine and it stays at nine because it's actually referencing this one so the, the key is here Using that uh, M percent thing. So that's the for each example. The other example is, of course, the back to the find if example. So if you begin, we you end know, all like this now. This one. So that's the basic format, but uh, it's a little different. It's a little different with the find if, right? Because the find if is uh, taking a unary predicate. So it's taking unary. That means one argument. Predicate means that it needs to return a value. Now I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try returning a value uh, in here. So suppose you're looking for a number uh, forty or whatever. Uh, instead of count, I should say find target, huh? 40. Pass it in. If i equals the find target, turn true, else uh, false. Uh, just show the code, how the code actually flows. Also, see out found here. 
just show how the code flows. Oh, and lots of uh, junk. Let me take this out though. Oh, actually works. Okay, see if it works. <laughs> it actually builds, I should say found. So if I try 41, it's not gonna hit the found, right? Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Oh, and the way you do it is uh, you, you get the iterator. And where's that blob of code I <laughs> saved from before? Okay. Not found because it's 40. I'm gonna take out this. So, okay, so it was 41, it's not found. If I type in 40, it's gonna find it, it's gonna print it out uh, via this line. Okay, so what I, I wasn't sure that this would actually work because, um, because uh, this thing is a predicate. It, the right thing to do is to specify a return type like this. Okay, but I guess for simple functions, like for simple programs like this one, the compiler is smart enough to figure out that you are returning a Boolean value. Okay. But in general, um, if it's a predicate, if it's returning something, you yeah, need to specify the return type. So in this case, I'm returning a Boolean. So it's being specified like this in this arrow key, uh, arrow bool thing. So that's the right way to do it. <laughs> Although for very simple cases, it works without that, apparently. So 40 found, uh, 42 will not be found, it's not in the list, okay. So that covers it, so a basic format, uh, capture list, immutable, the damn percent thing, which is to, uh, let you change the variable and have that change persist. Um, and the arrow key, uh, the arrow symbol thing is for the return type. So for algorithms, I already covered for each and find if, and there's like a lot of other algorithms. And so I'm, I'm gonna go over some of those, like I'm gonna go over the ones in this list, but there there's a whole bunch of them. So it's in the algorithm header, and here, this is your full list uh, here. But, but you know, you go over some of those. They're pretty similar. So, so go over these should be enough. So the first one is find. Oh, and oh, I've been using this. But actually, this stuff works on uh, other data structures as well because they're taking the iterator input. They're not taking it. It's not specific to a vector. All the other uh, data structures also produce an iterator. And in general, it's not, this is kind of like a, the simple case, and something slightly more realistic. My class again. So make my own little data structure as an ID, has a, has a name. So public this. And yeah, you, you need algorithm, you need vector, vector for this. So I'll make a constructor. So I'm gonna add a few items onto this uh, push back, right? Push back. Uh, 
one. Twenty and uh, thirty. Uh, it's okay for now. So I just find V dot uh, begin. And I'll find something called. I'll, I'll try to find the ten. Okay. Oh. IT, something like this. Oh. So I'll get my iterator. If iterator is V.N, you know, the same old blob. <laughs> it's not found. Oh, and this won't work. Right. So this should be something else. Could have a print function, but I <sighs> guess better to have a print function here. What you see out here, I'll just call print. I'll do my C out here then. ID. ID name name I'll put a tap here oh I need end line so so if I don't find it, I'll type in if I find it I'll call the print function using iterator okay it's not gonna work but <laughs> Uh, blah blah blah, man. Oh boy. One error. <laughs> yeah, there's there no match for operator, blah blah blah. So the find, um, you know, it's gonna go over every element in the vector and it's gonna compare, you know, is this, is this, this thing the same as, uh, this thing, right? And is this thing the same as this thing? And it's using the operator equal. Uh, you know, equal, equal, equal. So I, I need this operator equal, equal. So const uh, my, my class, my class. Oh, always do this. So, so I, um, the way I compare this ID. So if the ID is uh, equal, is sufficient. Right. If uh, I'm not gonna look at the name, I'm only gonna look at ID. If the ID is good enough, I'll return true. Else, return false. That. Yeah, remember to find if lets you specify a function to do you know to do this comparison, uh, or a function object or lambda expression. Uh, the find is gonna use this operator. And we couple more examples of something similar to this, similar mechanism. Oops, I didn't build the. <laughs> no warning. Yeah, it works. I guess I ran already. Already, oh, I ran again. So they found the ID ten. Uh, what if I use uh, twelve? Right, so I can find it. So hit the not found thing. Right, so so that's the find. So next up is a binary search. Uh, binary search works only on shorted data structures. So let me add a couple more here. Uh, make it make it forty and fifty. Forty, fifty.
Now binary search doesn't return iterator. I think it doesn't. Just be sure. Yeah, binary search is returning a boolean. So it's like either a yes or no thing. Okay. So I won't be doing this. Oh, I better save this. It's going to happen over and over again. Save this stuff. Now, uh, as usual, I think it's v, v begin what, V begin V end? It's always V begin V end. Uh, just to be sure, oh, wrong browser. Not this one. First, last. Yep, first, last. Oh, you can supply your own custom compare thing, but I'm just going to use this, this thing. That's the compare. That's the default comparison. And I'm looking for forty. Uh, blah 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 blah. Huge number of things. There's no operator uh, less than. Yeah. Even though this is shorted, according to the ID, it's kind of shorted because yeah. There's no operator less than. In general, you need the less than operator to uh, to do shorting. And binary, in general, you need to short the vector and then do the binary search anyways. But let me, but uh, even if, even in this case, I'm not, I'm not doing any shorting. They still need the less than operator, I guess, for whatever reason. So it's the same, uh, you know, same header thing like this one here. All right, same thing. So according, uh, again, I'm sorting by the ID. So let's just copy this down here. If the ID is less than, then it's less than. You know, so it's the same thing here. I'm just, it's comparison is shorting based just on the ID field. So let's see how this works, or if it works. Uh, okay, so const, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's important that um, in binary search, it's important that the data remains shorted, you know, for binary search to work. And the way to guarantee that the data remains short is to have the const, uh, you know, to have the const, right? It counts as this argument of this disregard qualifier. You need a, a const here, const here. Because this function shouldn't change, like for example, shouldn't change the ID. Because once you change the ID, it's no longer in shorted order. And if it's not in shorted order, binary search won't work. So that's that's the what I'm trying to say. You need to make a const so that the function doesn't change the ID, so that you know doing the binary search won't change the the order of this uh, data structure. Okay, so this this will work. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. So it returns a boolean, and uh, I forget. Just do it like this. So it's found, and if it's forty-two, oh, you know, get it back. Press the wrong button. Okay. <laughs> Uh, if it's 42, it's gonna it's gonna return a no. It's not found. 42 is not found. Now binary search requires things to be in the sorted order. Okay, if I sort of move things around, uh, it's not gonna work. Okay, so I kind of try to defeat this. Uh, let me get this out of this. Uh, I don't need that many. So so it goes to the middle. It goes to 20. Right, if I swap two. <laughs> oh, that's why they need the lesson operator. Oh. They're gonna go to the middle of the list. They'll go to twenty and it wants to see. And twenty is not a match, okay, for say ten, right? So they need to know which way to go. Do it is the ten somewhere 
between the 20 and the 1, or is the 10 between 20 and 40? So that's why, you know, using binary search requires this uh, less than operator. So you go to 20, and they'll think, oh, 10, 10 should be between this, right? And they won't find it. Because I stuff things in out of order. So I won't find it, even though, yeah, 10's in here. Won't find it. So that's why um, uh, while introducing the binary search, uh, I also introduce the short. So short is again V begin. The end. Uh, that's it. I think that's it. But there's always options. So I'm I'm going to get the document documentation for short. So here we go. First, last, and yeah, custom comparator. But forget about that for now. Uh, just I'm just using the default comparator here. Okay. So I do this short, it's going to work. It's going to find it, yeah. So it's, it finds it. If it's 10, if it's 11, it won't find it, of course. Right, because uh, I put stuff in out of order, but then the short puts the whole list back in order again, so the binary search can't work. Now, now I want to print out the, the thing from the short. Okay, so... Guess I'll use it for each to do that. V and <laughs> it's just like before. So what comes in is gonna be the well for each you you can change this, right? Because sometimes uh, for each does change the the class that's being passed in to the for each. Uh, oh, that's, that's just the way it is. It doesn't know how you indent. So I'll do my class. Oh, <laughs> use this dot print. So for each, it's going to call v begin v end. It's going to go over every single element between v begin and v end. And it's gonna come in here, in my class. I'm a, for each of those elements, each of these elements, you know, my class. I'm gonna call it my class. And I'll call print. Now oh, before return, so a typo. Yeah. So here's the printing. So they're in order. Do it this one here. Ah, I was clicking the wrong one. Uh, so go. So I'm save this for later. So I'm going to um, add a couple more of this to try to show a point. Because if you look at the for each documentation, you say equivalent items are not guaranteed to keep the original order. So I wonder if I can get that. So so I'm doing comparison based on just the ID. So these are these three items, 30A, 30A, 30B, C. These are equivalent items because they have the same ID. So, so according to documentation, this ABC is not guaranteed this order. Let's see if I can duplicate that. Not just forget it. Eh, whatever. So ABC remains in order. But what they're saying is that you know this ABC, it's ABC here. It's not guaranteed to be ABC in the output. If you want to be guaranteed, you need a stable short. Stable short like this. Okay, so documentation like this. Okay, equipment items are guaranteed to keep their original order C stable short. And stable short, just like short, except that 
you know, for the return uh, item like short, but stable short preserves the relative order of elements with equivalent values. So stable short will guarantee that no matter how you mix this thing, where you put this ABC thing, you know, you know, the, if you know A comes before C comes before, uh, if A comes before B comes before C in the original pre-short order, after shorting, it's gonna maintain the same order. Let's just <laughs> just to show, whatever, whatever. <clears throat> So next up is a copy and copy if. So this is one. Uh, let me get this back in order. So for it's for easier read, I guess. Oops. Let me let me archive this too. So come up a lot too in these because all these algorithms uh, so many similar things. Okay. So I need this copy. So copy, like they say, copies from one data structure to the next. So I'm gonna have a second vector. I'm gonna copy from V to V2, but V2 needs to be resized because V2 will have a size of zero, right? Because I haven't put anything in it. It's a dynamic array, so V, V size. So I'm gonna make V2 big enough to hold elements for this. Then I'll case copy. Yeah, V begin, V end, and then what, right? It's always V begin, V end, and then what happens afterward? So copy, copy. So I'll put uh, the first argument's result, so V2, not begin. Oh, and I'll display V2. See if this works. Uh, error. It's this thing here. And uh, no match function. Oh. oh, okay. So when I call, oh, that's not okay. I didn't know that one. Okay. So when I call resize, um, the the software is expanding v2, which is the dynamic array. It's expanding from size zero to size uh, five. Right. This thing has five. And then it's populating with what? Because it doesn't have the constructor. Okay, so so it needs a default constructor so they know how to populate the uh, the vector object. So I'll give some initial conditions: name equals no name. So now it works, and I'll run it. So it's copied, right? I'm printing out v2, right? So v2 became v2 end, That's right? So I added these things to v1, uh, copy, copies it to v2, and here's v2. Oh, that's a copy if. So just be sure. C plus plus eleven of a of a sign. Uh, older compilers may not support it. Okay. Yeah, the this version of uh, <laughs> uh, Linux Eclipse thing I'm using actually doesn't support that. But I'll do it anyways. Let's just see what happens. V two. Say copy if. Right, so it's got iterator as you show the first and the last and result, and then it's got the predicate fun the unary predicate. Huh. So might as well just do this, right? Copy if. So in in addition to 
what used to be there. I need a unary predicate. I need something like this. <laughs> One arrow key. Something like this, right? So what gets passed in is going to be that thing again. Hey, do I have this saved? Oh, I don't. Huh? I almost have it saved. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me save some. Okay, so I almost had so I had this saved. But the only difference is it returns a bull. So I'm going to save this because this happens <laughs> a whole bunch of times too. So I have I have a version that you know a, a plain old simple function lambda thing that doesn't return anything, and I have something that returns a uh, boolean, which is uh, so it's a decision maker. So okay, so I'm gonna only copy stuff over twenty, right? Suppose so if my class dot id over twenty, then return true, and and then you know copy if it's gonna pick up the true, and then it's gonna copy. If it return false, uh, copy if it won't do anything. Let's see if this is working. It won't. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah, copy if not resolve. Yeah, yeah, it's that. It, it on the version I'm using is not working, but this is copy if is in the standard. I mean, it's not something. So it, sh it will be portable. So I'll just uh, hop over Windows here and uh, <laughs> just do in Windows. There's, there's a Windows building it. Oh, errorless, no errors. So copy if it's copying everything over 20. So 30 gets copied and 40 gets copied and other stuff doesn't get copied. And and so the remaining, this is printing out vector v2. So the first two elements is the stuff that got copied. The other three elements is uh, what used to be there. Uh, due to the default constructor, so it returns an iterator. So you can kind of clean this up a little bit, right? Because if you notice that, you know, um, there are three elements that are just not really there, right? That's because over here I put I expand the v2 to the size of v, so v2 has five elements, but only. You know, only two of those five elements get copied. Only these two elements get copied over. So let me see if I can clean see if I can clean that up. Uh, get iterator. Right. So what's iterator? Right. It's probably pointing to the end of it. <laughs> so what's the return? The iterator pointing to element following the last element. Yeah. So you just do v two. Ooh. No, no Intel sense. Okay, yeah, you use erase. Oh, it's indenting it. Uh, you're erasing this to the end of, uh, to end of v to the end. Let's see if this works. So it builds at least. Oh, let's see if it works. Okay, so now I only have two elements. What happens is that, you know, the copy if tells me where, where you know the copying ended, and I erase all the elements. I remove all the elements after that. So there's only two elements. I compare it before this window from before. Okay, and let's copy if. Uh, next is uh, count and count if. So count is like uh, count how many instances of an element. So let me let me do some repeats here. So let me do some repeats. A twenty B and twenty C. Do some repeats here. I'm take out this uh take out this. Okay. Uh 
Okay, so count v. Oh, v begin v n. And the third argument is always v begin v n. Okay, by now I should realize that. Third argument is the class itself, the, uh, the value itself. Let's see, it returns iterator trades or returns count. Different type, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it returns an integer. See, that works. Oh, uh, let's say I want to count the 20. 20. So, I'll do this. Uh, count cannot be used as a function. Matches, uh, I shouldn't call it count again. Is, is there a count somewhere else? Or okay, there's no other count. Yeah, actually, um. <laughs> A chair is not here down this line, so I click on the first one, go up here, but this is this is where it is. Let's do this. Oh that builds. So three is solve three of these. So if I say ten, right, it's gonna find one of those. One of those, this one. If I say uh oops. It's gonna find like none of those. Okay. So count is basically again using this thing to to make a comparison. Uh, count if so you see the pattern right. There's a find. There's a find if. You know it's count now. There's count if. So it's gonna instead of doing this, they gonna let you use a a custom function find it so just be sure yeah unary predicate oh <laughs> I had a little thing saved up <laughs> here Right, so let me count something that's only above ID of say 20, more than 20. Okay, so if, uh, yeah, morning time, I count this. Also, don't count it. Blah, 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 a whole bunch of things. No match for this. Uh, no, no match. Yeah, it's a typo because <laughs> uh, they're looking for count and they're trying to uh, they're trying to compare this thing with the my class thing because <laughs> uh, I didn't do this. Cause I'm meant to use count if. Okay. So I saw two the two uh, my class two of those objects have ID more than twenty. Uh, more than equal to 20, right? It should be 5, right? Yeah. So that's that's uh, that's count if. So next one is uh, fill and fill underscore n. A uh, fill is it's a way to fill the vector of objects. So instead of this, instead of this thing, oh, yeah, I'm going to save this. Maybe useful, might be. Okay, so in, instead of using all of this, I can fill. 
I can use the fill function to uh, stuff things into it. It's always V begin V end. Then uh, what do you want to fill it up with? Oh, I shouldn't do that. Okay, I'm going to declare, I'm going to resize. V dot, uh, resize it to 5. Shouldn't be V, V begin. Let's say I just fill up the first uh, 3. So it's not V begin V N. Yeah, V begin V N will fill up the whole thing. So if I just want to fill up the first three, I'll use this. Okay, so this should fill up just the first three. And then uh, right, right. So it builds, no problem. So I'll go over here and get the blob of code that prints it out for each thing. So this this thing prints out the content. So fill it up and print it out here so I'm expecting three items with uh, one and the next two item will have an ID of zero because that's the default so this is the three items of one is coming from this uh, fill function and the rest of it the zeros are just the default constructor over here okay that's the okay so fill n is just a little different. I'll make it like 10. So I might, so fill in n is not the beginning of the end. Okay, so let's just go here. Fill n. So fill n is uh, v begin size, you know, number of elements of fill and that. So let me just, Let's call V begin two, okay. And three. So I changed so I made a oh fill n fill underscore n. So changes are I make the vector uh, size ten. I call fill underscore n start filling at the second one. Well at index two. So it's gonna have two the first two elements should be uh, ID zero followed by three elements of this, ID 1, followed by five elements of uh, ID 0 again. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if it builds. Uh, builds. Okay, so what do I got here? So two elements of ID 0 and three elements of uh, you know, index 2. So you know, here, here's your index 0, index 1 here. So index two is where it started, you know, um, an object class one. So these three are coming from fill in and the rest of them is just uh, the default constructor. So that's fill in. Next is uh, generate and generate n. Because the fill function is filling it up with like identical things, but generate function generator. Uh, it's a function object, basically. Generator function. Huh, they don't call it predicate or <laughs> unary, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Oh, I, I know why they don't call it. Yeah, because it doesn't take any arguments. Okay. So go back here. So again, I'll resize 10. Oh, oh, this printing it out, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to fill this up. Uh, generate. Yes, before we begin, we... I'm going I'm to do, well... How about just generate the first 8? Eight. 8. Uh, here's generator function. See if that, yeah, it, and then you return a new object. 
So I should, I should say this. Did he say anything else? Generate a function that is called with no argument and returns some value of a type compatible to those pointed to by iterators. So it can be a function point or function object. So yeah. So that's a function object I'm using, or a lambda expression thing. Uh, <laughs> Whatever I'm using lambda expression, it's returning a type. It's returning uh, the vectors of the type my class. I'm returning this my class. So, so the generate function is gonna uh, it's gonna put this my class at you know wherever it's generated at. So uh, do that count thing again, right? So let's start at 100. Okay, I'm gonna pass it in here. So I need the uh, ampersand. I need the mutable. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm passing in the count. I'm using the count, the counter to create an object. So the object will get a unique ID and that's the, the count. After I create it, I increment it so that next time I run this thing, it's gonna be a different value. It's gonna be an increment of that. And I return this object. I return it uh, to the generator function and then the generate function is gonna stuff this my class into the vector. Let's see if this builds. So here we go. So generate only covers from beginning to uh, begin plus eight. There's a total of ten elements. That's why over here, it, you know, there's two elements that didn't get uh, generated. So here's the generator. It's you know, so ID ten. Oh, I get back. Okay, so it starts at ID ten to uh, 06. 106. I mean, not ID 10, ID 100 to 106. So, oh, it's generate N. So, okay, look at generate N. And the first and the element, yeah. This, so this one, <laughs> you might as well be uh, the other one, right? Uh, what is it? So Jerry is less interesting. Goes back to the identical thing again. The thing where you have the identical uh, objects. So first size n, Jerry n. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna begin at index two, four, five. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start at index two. I'm gonna do five objects, and all five objects is gonna be like this. Okay. So here it is. This is Jerry N. Right, this generate lets you specify like the beginning and the ending. And this is slightly different. It lets you specify the beginning, which I specified at plus two, right? This is plus zero, plus one, begin plus two points here. And specify how many uh, iterations, how many instances are you doing? So I'm doing it five times, so here's five times. So that's a generate end. <coughs> And next up is uh, the lower bound and upper bound. Lower bound, upper bound. 
and get rid of this again. So I'm gonna bring back to bring back this stuff. Yeah, a lot of times like th things have to be uh, inserted in a sorted order. So lower bound and upper bound tells you where you can insert while still maintaining the sorted order. So I'm gonna have this uh, back to this vector again. So this vector is sorted. I need this. Oops. So lower bound. So we begin and we end. And suppose I'm inserting a 20, something with an ID of 20, okay. So let's say lower bound. It returns an iterator, I believe. Yeah, it returns an iterator, forward iterator. Auto IT. So it's going to tell me, uh, I can insert 20 right here, but so it's going to tell me where I can insert the 20, okay, without messing up the short order, because if I insert, insert it here, it's going to insert, it's going to mess up short order. So, yeah, I, I might as well do them together. There's also an upper bound. And, uh, see the way. Well, the way to print the output is, uh, you know, uh, lower bound ID. Oh, <laughs> lower bound it. Upper bound it. Lower bound it. Let me do this other thing. Uh, oh, there and so this is one way but the problem with this line is that you know if the iterator is pointing to the very end uh, it's not going to work that well <laughs> So you need something like that, uh, lower, right. Because um, if it's pointing to the end, it's not going to be pointing to this element. It's going to be pointing to the element after the 40. So, you know, if this uh, v dot end. Oh, same thing here. For display, I guess. And. else right and the same short thing here if the upper bound is hitting the end you know upper bound ID is the end okay ah uh, runs 20 30 okay so it tells you that you know I can insert between 20 and 30. The upper bound is pointing to the one afterwards, like whatever. That's why I have the end thing. So if I have 100, you know, it's going to say you, know, you need to insert at the end. Oh, it's a mistake. Okay. So if I have 100, it's going to tell you, oh, it's going to insert. You have to insert that at the end. Right, the, the lower bounds uh, equal VN, upper bound VN, you have to insert it there. And uh, if it's at one, oh, actually, I do have a one, right? I do have a one. So say minus 100, minus 100, then it's going to tell me that I have to insert it at the very beginning. Lower bound ID one, and ID is one. So I have to insert it here. 
effectively have to insert it before the object of an ID one. You know, I have to insert it before this one. Okay. If that's a hundred, right? I have to insert it before the the end. So before the the very v dot end. Okay. So I insert it at the end basically. If it's twenty. Right. I have to insert it before the twenty. So if I insert right right before this twenty, that's okay. Or I can insert it before the thirty. That's upper bound. Insert before thirty. I mean, and it will still be in order. Order. So that's what the lower bound, upper bound is saying. <clears throat> uh, next time I have partition and stable partition. Oh, I should get break. Okay, I'll go partition and stay. <laughs> uh, partition like divides things into two groups. But let me kind of kind of mix this one up a little bit. Because this one I actually found an order that doesn't work. So forty. All right, here. Yeah, I think this is the order that requires stable partition. It's it's kind of like the short and the stable short thing. Uh, B begin, V dot end. Oh wait, what did I do? Uh, yeah, I need the thing that prints out the vector. Just thinking here after I partition the phone, after I make the partition call, I'll display what's in the in the vector. And that's it, right? So it's partition here. Just to be sure. So it takes a unary predicate. So um this this function object uh, for template for unary predicate, copy and paste here. So here's the unary predicate. It takes one argument and returns a bool. Like this. Always return false. So, um, so partition is like, uh, it looks from beginning to end, you know, looks around this, this range and divides things into two groups. So how, how, how does it do that? I mean, up to me. Uh, so I guess I make a criteria if class ID equals 20. Yeah, if the object's ID is 20, then I say it's, it's in the group. True. Means that it's in the group that I want it. If it's not 20, then it's uh, outside, it falls outside of the partition. So let's see if this builds. Builds, runs it. So all the twenties are packed in the beginning. Now this is where I have to show it to you. Now see in the original list is twenty A, twenty B, and twenty C, but after the partition call, they're no longer in order. Right? You know, it's twenty A, C, and B. So the original order is not it's not preserved. The relative ordering, so according to documentation, right? The relative ordering within each group is not necessarily the same as before the call. See stable partition for function with similar behavior, but with stable ordering within each group. So anyways, so that's what it's saying that if you use partition, the order might not be preserved. So it, it does the job of dividing the collection into two groups, but the order is not preserved. So, so it just changes to um, Stable partition, and you know this. This thing should be A B C again. Yeah, it's over here, one thirty forty. So, same thing. You know, uh, separate the things here into two groups, 
and but stable partition will preserve the order. I think that's it, with, uh, and that's with it with partition. Uh, next is um, remove and remove if. The remove and the remove if these functions they um they don't really remove they kind of like move things around uh, let me show you remove okay so this function cannot alter properties of uh, the object containing the range of elements. So it cannot alter the size of an array or a container, okay? So you can't alter the size of the vector, that's what it's saying. So I have this here. Uh, let me get this back in order again. <clears throat> oh wait, this is the bad order, I might want to keep this. Right, so this is the order I don't understand. And I don't need this. Okay. Back. So I'm gonna change change back into short order for easier uh, understanding. So remove. So they take uh so <laughs> v dot begin, v dot end. And uh, they're gonna take the object that you want to remove. So let's say let's say I want to remove the twenty. So I'll remove this object. Run. So you see that they sort of move things around. So you have your your ABC. Yeah, they sort of got removed, but it's still in the vector. It's just that you know, you know this this part one through forty is actually the list that you ended up that you want to end up with, and the stuff that they're removing is just bumped to the end of it. So that's sort of like what they're saying here. You know, that uh, this function cannot alter, cannot alter the size of an array or a container, so it can't alter it. Okay. So you, you actually have to clean up after this remove to, to truly remove, you know, the, the, the 20s. To truly remove that, this, this thing here. I mean, you have to clean it up yourself. So, uh, auto. So, remove gives you the iterator that's pointing at the end of the collection, right? So, return type uh, value to be return an iterator to the element that follows the el the last element not removed. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like before, you do the erase thing. And you erase from here to v dot end. So it the iterator is pointing to the the final file over here. Just erase everything afterward to clean it up. So after you added the erase thing, now this is the list, right? Which is uh, which is this list. That this list is this list without the twenty, without the classes of it twenty. Okay. <clears throat> so let's remove. Okay, uh, the remove if, uh, remove is using, you're supplying a class and then it's detecting which element to remove using this uh, the comparison operator thing. So remove if lets you uh, choose, lets you create your own uh, function. So go over here again, remove if. So uh, unary predicate. So one argument, uh, uh, boolean return. Wait, hi. 
the copy and paste trick, right? How does this this thing here? So let, let me, uh, same thing, if I do the same thing here, you know, remove all the 20s. If, if this equal 20, uh, return true. <clears throat> so it builds. Yeah, so this is how, it, so same thing as before. Okay, so you can enter in function. I'll, I can change it, of course. I can change it so that uh, remove uh, anything equal to less, uh, equal to greater than 30. So this should take out the 30 and the 40. So yeah, you get 1, 10, 20, and the 30 and 40 got removed. So that's an example of remove if. Uh, next is replace and replace if. Oh, I replace that. Hmm. So you don't need this on me. Look at return type just to be sure. Uh, it's returning iterator, but you don't really need it because you're replacing it. The reason I need the re uh, iterator for remove is, you know, for a cleanup. So v begin v end is the range that you need to look at. Um, the third argument is I think it's what you need to replace, right? Yeah, the old value followed by new value. Okay. So say that I want to replace all the all the twenties with like something else. So. New value. So I'm going to you know, remove all the objects with ID 20, and then I'll replace it with something ID 200. I won't be erasing again. There's no cleanup in this case. <sighs> Is this wrong? <clears throat> So that's an example. All the all the twenties got replaced with this new object. You know, a replace if lets you enter in a function. So this is still a replacement object. Okay, but in, instead of this, this is the old value. Instead of the old value, uh, you can enter in a function. Oops. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I have that already, right? It's that predicate thing again, I bet. Place if so unary predicate again. Let's copy that thing over here. So if I return true, that means that it's going to get replaced. Oops. Okay, so if ID is 20, I'm going to return true. That costs the item to be replaced by the 200. ID 200 name equal Y. Okay. Right, so all the 20s got replaced by this one. So I'm gonna, if I want to replace uh, 30 and 40, I do this. So, you know, 10, uh, 1, 10, and 20 remain the same, but 30 and 40 got replaced by this thing. So that's an example of a replace if. Uh, next one, search, search and search in.
So this one like search for one sequence within another. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna have I need two sequences. Alright. Ah, uh, vector v. I'm gonna search for this. Uh, let's say I'll have search for this sequence here. Plus v two. So I'm search for the sequence v2 inside sequence v1, okay? Search. It's gonna be v begin vn, right? Uh, that's our search. It's two predicate. Oh, so equality or a predicate. Okay. So you can use either one. Uh, I'll, I'll just use equality one. It's that's pretty much the same thing anyways. Uh, where's the sequence? V2. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so, so you need to fully describe the sequence one by first and last, and he sequence number two by first and last. So yeah, it'll be v2 begin, v2 dot end. Okay, so I'm searching for the sequence v2 within v1. Search, okay. So is that that thing where, you know, if the it equals end, print not found. So I need this thing again, okay. It's gonna be found, yeah. So I'm looking for 20, 20, 30. But if I'm looking for a 201, <laughs> so if I'm looking for the sequence of uh, 201, 20, and 30, it's gonna be not found. So that's example for search. Uh, search n is just an alternative way to describe this v2 sequence. Like search, search is describing the the sequence like this, like v2 begin v2 dot n. Or, or you know v2 begin plus one v2 dot n minus two or whatever okay whatever that's the that's how search is doing it okay search n is uh you know it's kind of like the the generate n and the, the other create n or all those underscore n functions are oh, wrong wrong browser search n yeah, so there's a size and then this is the the value. So I need this anymore. So size three value twenty. My class twenty. So I'm looking inside sequence V. Uh, for this sequence, uh, a sequence that contains three elements in each element is like uh, an object with an ID of 20. It's going to find it's, it's basically this thing here. Okay. It's 28, so that's where it is. Uh, if I want to find a single object, I can do this, I guess. It's going to find 30. Okay, so if I found this thing, right? If I do this, it's, you know, 301 is not going to find it. So that's example for search n. Uh, next up is next up is transform. Okay. Oh, uh, I need that v2 back thing again. Okay. Yeah, transform has two versions. It's a unary version and a binary version. So let's go look here. So the the unary unary operation unary version takes there's a one source list and there's one uh, single result list and there's an operation you you know a function. 
the binary version takes uh, the two sources, like there's one list, first one through last one, there's a second list, uh, first two, and there's a, there's a target, the target goes in results. Okay, so I'll, I'll do unary first. So I need, I need, I need a result vector, right? V2, okay. So the source is going to be V, and the result is going to be V2. I'll just call it result. Yeah, nothing else called okay, nothing else called result. So the resize. Oh, V.size. Okay, I'm going to resize this. Transform. Uh, begin. It doesn't have to be begin and end. Uh, begin and end because I'm going over whole list. You know, if you want to just do part of the list, it will be begin plus something through end minus something. Okay, so first, last, okay, okay. So that's the source, right? V, begin, V, end, that's your source. Result that, you know, that's for destination. For destination, they only need the starting point. They don't need the ending point. Because they just, you know, it's element by element thing, right? So here's the the um, transform function. Okay. So this is unary, so there's only one. So I have this. Do I have? Do I have that? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like this thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's this thing. Save myself a little bit of typing. So for it's gonna go over vector v, and for each class, it's gonna do this thing. But but I need to do something. You know, I need to return something for a result. So well, my class. Uh, let me create a new class where the ID is. Uh, you know, create a new class. My class number two. Then the, the new class has an ID that's uh, uh, two times bigger than the old ID. And the name is uh, result. Okay, there. Uh, it works. Oh, there's no output because I need that thing that prints it out, right? <sighs> so I need to print out the result. So in result, all the IDs are two times, like so ID 1 became ID 2, right? ID uh, 10 became ID 20, so forth. You know, all the IDs got double and the name is called result. It's because of this function here. It creates a, a new object that's ID times two and a result. Okay, let me go to the binary version. This is actually a little too long <laughs> for comfort. Yeah, four, four elements should be enough. The binary version has two lists has two inputs, so I'm going to have V and L. V2 here. Uh, it is the same, huh? So like 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. <laughs> now change the ID. <laughs> Result and they're the same size, right? I got four elements each. Okay, look at binary version. It's got uh, list one, list two, and result. And then the operation. Okay, so so uh, v begin v end. That's the list one. V two dot begin. This describes list number two, and result dot begin describes where the result is. And this is binary, so there's going to be two of them. 
v2 object, comma v1 object. Right, so it's going to be two of them. I'm going to create a new one where the ID is the sum of the two. So this one produces a new object where the new object gets ID by adding the the IDs of the two other objects. So here we do it. So this is result. See the one and the five makes a six. See the twenty and the seven makes a twenty-seven, and so on, right? So that's the example for um, transform. Oh, and at the, now at the very end, the very last one, uh, unique. The unique uh, remove adjacent repeating values. So go back to the to the, this one. <laughs> I want this one back. It's, it's got the repeating values here. Get rid of all this now. So it's got a uh, unique. It, it's just V begin V end. Right. Now after this function is called, it should have all the repeating values erased. So where's that? Okay, there's that code that prints it out. Yeah, for each thing. So it works, it builds, build it, uh, oh, okay, so you see it? This is original one, so these are repeating values in the original one. So in the output, there's, they are, they're gone, but there's this thing left over again at the very end. So it's just like the, the, other, remo the other function that just went over the remove function. You know, it doesn't, it's not capable of resizing the array. So I'm going to have this again. Does it mention anything like that or? Oh, well, guess not. The removal is done by replacing the duplicate elements by the next element that is not a duplicate, signaling the new size of the shortened range by returning iterator to the n element that should be considered the new, you know, pass the n element. But uh, so basically, it's returning an iterator that points to the very last element, and it's not it's not resizing it. Okay, it's just just like before. Same same fix like before. So to clean up this, these two elements that are left over, because they the two repeats, right? The two repeats. These two are, you know, the non-unique, the duplicates. Uh, do du duplicates according to uh, this function, of course, the equality function. So I need to uh, v die erase again. Oops, make parenthesis. It v die n again. So the erase thing and uh, clean, clean up the last two elements. Yeah, it will be pointing to the uh, this one. So now the result is uh, correct. So here's the original list uh, one through forty, uh, with the twenty being duplicated two times, and so in the output it's the same stuff except the twenty, the duplicates uh, got removed. Now this only remove adjacent duplicates, right? So if it's, you know, yeah, this is a duplicate, right? Twenty is same as this because ID is the same, but they're non-adjacent, so they won't get removed. So it's just to uh, show the show the example, show the output here.
right? So 1, 10, 20, 30, and so 20 again, and 40. So unique, just uh, adjacent unique, not, not like unique for the whole thing, right? Because 20 is not unique. 20 is appear two times. But for, you know, adjacent elements are unique. That's what unique means, okay? So that's the example for unique, and that concludes the overview of the algorithm section.